Now here, only a few blocks from the hotel, is the Malacon, that seafront promenade that runs along the edge of Havana. And actually on the way along the Malacon, along the shore to the Hotel Nacional. I think that's it, where I hope to change some money. On the way up the driveway to the Hotel Nacional, saw a crowd gather here by these two old cars. I don't know what was happening, but whatever it was is not happening at the moment. Anyway, to resume my journey to the Hotel Nacional. I just moved away out of sight and the music started up again. Now I can't see them. The Hotel Nacional is quite swanky, as you might guess. It has a huge pool at the back. And this is the lobby. Classy cars are all over the place. And there's a lot of these little things around. These, just big enough for three people. So I'm sat on to Havana for years and it only came last year but the trip coincided with my book in New York, my Warhol book, so I put it off for a year and it's a, an academic group hosted by a guy called Cliff Durand who teaches part time at the um, university in Havana and lives in San Miguel in Mexico and so I finally came with this group and uh, it's really nice. I mean, I, I don't know what I'd expect. There'll be a certain amount of lectures and things because it is an academic group of teachers and things like that. But um, I expect to have a good time and learn a lot about this country. I wanted to, to see it before it changes. Cuba inevitably will change in the next year or two. And uh, I hope it doesn't go back to the kind of mafia type days that existed in Batista's um, uh, reign. Um, I sort of admire what they're trying to do. And of course, America has been so paranoid for 50 years, you know, thinking of this little tiny island was a threat to the great United States of America, done everything it can to crush it. So far as I can see, only because it said it was communist, but it didn't apply the same kind of wisdom to Vietnam and China and other countries that claim to be communist. I mean, America's acted kind of like a bully, really. And, uh, you know, maybe Cuba, in trying to, to do a new kind of ideal, equal type society, has made some errors, but then who wouldn't? But I don't want to get into politics now. I mean, it's only my first day. Coming in from the airport, there were a few posters here and there, mostly um, generic, saying, you know, viva the uh, new society and that kind of thing. That isn't exactly what they said, but basically the mood was that. It was sort of general and optimist. I mean, in Nicaragua, it's all personal about Ortega and what a brilliant man he is and how he manifests the revolution. But here in Cuba, so what I can see from the posters, they really believe in their society and they really hope that it can succeed and despite incredible odds, it so far has succeeded. The other thing I noticed, apart from the old cars of course, was the um, at almost every major intersection they have those the, those um, countdown signs that tell you the number of seconds you have to cross the street. But they're both ways. They're, they're uh, countdowns for the um, cars coming in from the incoming side street and also for pedestrians on the street in which you're facing and they obviously count down and uh, when the countdown ends then the car moves or the car stops according to what it says. I mean, I've seen this kind of thing before, but never quite so visibly and in such large letters. It, uh, it, um, it stems from common sense, and uh, I sort of admire that. Well, as you can see, there's no shortage of cars. 
It's just that not many of them are actually 20th for first century models. But they all look pretty well kept. I missed the briefing this morning because nobody bothered to tell me that the hour had moved an hour forward. They're very casual. And the guy that's running this trip is known to all the other people because they all live together in Mexico. That's the disadvantage of being an odd man out. Nobody gives a damn about you, you know? Anyway, I'll try and catch up later with him and have him, have him, tell, him tell me what I missed. So Lena is now going to tell me what I missed this morning. Well, this morning it was only the discussion of our schedule. And uh, now, you know, we are going to begin really in the afternoon at 1.30 we are going to begin our program here in Cuba. In the afternoon, we are going to visit the uh, Revolution Museum. Right. And uh, it's uh, more or less the history of all the revolutionary fights in Cuba. Seeing a lot of pictures, documents, a lot of uh, personal belongings of very important people from the revolution. So when people first come to Cuba, what is it you tell them that they, why they're going to like it? Uh, well, people in general laugh a lot, uh, mainly Cuban people. Right. Now, Cuban people, are, uh, we are really uh, open, open mind, really friendly, really uh, uh, generous, happy. Maybe um, speaking about material things, it's what people don't like a lot. Well, they've grown up without them, so. They're... Yes, and maybe <laughs> you know. Uh, but speaking about tourism that come here to Cuba to find maybe uh, in some occasions things. It's yeah. really difficult for, for you, for, for uh, tourism in general, because we don't have this, uh, you know, big stores, big things, uh, this uh, publicity you have, you know, everywhere. Here in Cuba it's more simple. Well, Americans have been a bit spoiled, you know. They've yes. had too much. Yes, I too know. Too much to choose all the time. <laughs> I know, but uh, at the end when you spend here one, two, three, four, five days, you leave our country with this feeling of, uh, 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 you know, um, that you really uh, knew something really different, something, you know, in relation with uh, the countries in, uh, in all the world, Cuba is really different right. because of the system, because of the uh, uh, survival spirit, you know. But it's it's okay at the end, you know, and... Uh, what do you want to do in the end? Are you happy with your job or would you like to do something else? Yes, well... You know, I have studied uh, French language and literature as English, English also. Right. But I really love to, to write, to, to read. It's my right. favorite uh, uh, hobby. It's what I love to do. And my dream is to become a translator. Oh, yeah, right. Well, yes. you're pretty good already. Yes, but you know, uh, uh, I really love you know, it's my dream. I dream always with that in one. Uh, one room with a lot of uh, uh, books or computers trying to maybe one month, two, three, four, five months working there alone. It's something I really... Do you speak other languages as well as English and Spanish? I speak French, English and of course Spanish. Far out. You're too much. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> That's great. Thanks to you. Bye. Bye. Governors of Extension. On our way somewhere. Yeah. I think the museum, the revolution. B I O. Okay. So the <coughs> of the incomes are used in the restoration. That is how it functions today. Also, the agency for like. We're now in the museum of the revolution. I hope we don't have to climb all these stairs, but I think it's probably likely. All the rooms are going to be open because now it's on the restoration, the building. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, but it's open today. Just as I thought, we climbed all the stairs. Rebellion. Castro was captured in this hut. In the early days of the revolution, when they were all still in the San Maestri mountains before mounting the attack on Batista. Che Guevara in 1958. This magnificent room is called the Hall of the Mirrors. After Castro had taken over, there were many 
who disagreed, who were on trial here, and still people fighting against this new regime for which he had a plan. During America's attempt to retake Cuba via the Day of Pigs invasion, an American ship was hit. An American plane was shot down, but the invasion was quelled. 1961, the government put out a magazine. Everybody I know was doing underground papers. The Cubans used to send them all grandma. This paper, it was in English, presumably a propaganda paper. I have to say it was pretty boring. In the Republic of Cuba, all the power belongs to the working people, which puts it into practice through the assemblies of the parliament and other organs of the state. Vote tomorrow for the socialist constitution. I don't know what Rincon is, but it's a group of cretins, or described as cretins. There's Batista. There's Ronald Reagan. There's George Bush. And his son, W. Bush. And they're all thanked for making the revolution possible. I guess because they gave the Cubans something to fight for or against. George Bush with a Nazi helmet. He's reading a book upside down. So I'm sitting in the cafeteria hoping they haven't all left without me. I get separated and after this morning when Two bull-faced liars claim they never even saw me, even though I sat at their table. Um, I'm always worried people will leave without me. Anyway, I don't think they will go without me this time. I just get ahead of everybody because I videotape what it is I want and then move on. So if you come here to the Hotel Vedado, try and get room 709, which is that balcony there. Anyway, as high as you can go. I can't see because the sun's in my eyes. But the top there is a balcony, huge balcony, which is mine at the moment. some large screen program all the time by the bar and every night a group plays here you can book excursions there and I love the pool it is so nice I've been here almost every day for at least half an hour say you know snack bar at that side where a tuna fish sandwich cost 250 and the same for there's always new bile young beauties usually on some tour or other to take up all the uh, lounges <laughs> but nobody cares of course football popular on the big screen but there's a lot of channels on the 
on the television in the room, including about two or three for football, CNN, BBC News. There's a doctor in room 305 all the time. The elevator is very much mirrored, <laughs> multi-mirrored. Three shows about Cuba. By the way, that big uh, building, the Revolutionary Museum, used to be the Presidential Palace, which is why it's so grand and glorious. Tune in next week.